Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk through the March 2024 update that added the ability to add alignment options to the new data labels that can be driven by measures. Now, as you can see in front of us here, I have a line chart over on the right that allows us to actually cycle between three different calculations that will display both not only for the value that dedicates the line itself and the shape that it follows, but also the data labels rotate through and change color as well with that. So what I want to do is show you the approach that I used to create this and how I did some of the formatting and measure switches between the values and the labels. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start the demo, I want to mention the metric selection. So the selection in this slice will always represent the top value here and what drives the line itself. So with sales select, you see 1.5 in sales, which is actually the line value that is driving the line chart itself. If I switch to MOM for month over month, it changes to that. And then I also, if I select month over month sales percentage, then the percentage value moves to the top. Now notice, by the way, that in the actual card for each of these data labels, the values rotate as well. So whatever I select at the top, the other two will appropriately show in the second and third positions. And the coloring will always anchor to the percentage with the variance either up or down, red or green. So as that goes to the second or to the third position, you'll see that that color formatting moves with it. So what we'll do is we'll walk through each of these in turn. Now, I ended up using measures themselves to drive all this information. Today, these new data label options that we have here can't be leveraged with field parameters. They can only work with measures themselves. Hopefully someday we get field parameter uh, compatibility, but data labels for the moment, when we come over to this section, close everything down here, we have the main data label option, and I'm technically using three levels to provide each of the things that you see here. So the title is actually my data label one. And if I come over here, that's just switching between three calculations that I have. And I labeled it KPI because that's applying some formatting. One thing that I've noticed as well is if I am using a regular measure in here that has dynamic formatting applied specifically, let me give you an example of something here. So anything that has dynamic formatting I have found is not inherited into the label. So I created three specific KPI calculations, the sales KPI, which does the formatting, converts it to text. And then I have my month over month sales KPI and my percentage KPI as well, which formats everything into here. And this uh, error line is just a, a bug basically in DAX at the moment, but all of these are being converted to text in the measure. And then it's returning the text values, which represent the actual line value being represented. So that's why I created specific KPI measure calculations that's formatting those and also auto scaling them. Now you might've noticed in some of these like sales, I'm actually using the same technique that SQL BI does with dynamic measure formatting. It's basically just scaling this up to show K's, M's, B's, and T's outside of the scope of this demo, but just a thing to, to mention briefly on here. Now, coming back to this, essentially my data label one over here, that is in my title. So instead of showing the series name or anything, I can turn on the title, label that data label one. And more importantly, I have a color formatting option. So that's why when I select this, it then turns to this color here. So I actually have a measure being driven in this by coming back down to the title section, open up the color formatting here, data label one color format. Those are these options that I have right over here. If I open this up, color format for data label one, two, and three. So simply put, I have it moved up into here where if selected metric, if this slice of selection equals month over month sales percentage, it grabs the measure that has the hex code in it. So this basically just returns black, red, or green, which is contained in this other measure. So it's a pretty simple calculation, returning a hex code for any of those three and just referencing back to it. So it applies this color logic when I select this. And that exact same thing was done on my data label two and three. So it just knows which of these levels have those applied and it applies the appropriate color formatting based off my metric selection. So coming back to the visual, that's what my title is. And then I have two additional things below. So that middle one is the value. And the default selection is I want to increase the font size and highlight the variance, but not the variance percentage. So the fact that it's 468 below in this case, minus 23% from that initial value, that's why I'm including that in here. And that is why there's a increased font size. And again, 
I'm using my data label color format number two in this conditional formatting spot. And then that bottom label down here is the detail label as well. And that is data label three, again, repeated process for that. So we do have a few measures we need to create for this, but combined, I can have a single visual that rotates visible three different values, depending on which of my slicer selections are being made here. And I also didn't want every data label to show. So I also turned on the option here. If I come to the, I uh, believe, where are we at? Um, data labels, density, yes. Data label density under options. And that was turned down because otherwise we turn that up um, and we turn on optimize label efficiency. We can end up with a few too many on the page. So I wanted just the, the highlighted sections, which would be maybe like about down to there. So it's where the major points are here, the major dip there as it comes up. So any of these major changing turns and events. So reducing the density will hopefully clear up the space a bit and help you to highlight the important uh, paths and trends that you find in your data. But it was something that I had a lot of fun doing. And as I mentioned, the reason that I wanted to do a video on this is we finally got an alignment option, which is in the bottom section of the data labels to make sure I don't miss that. So come in under layout, we can go from single, which would have been not nearly as pretty to multi-line. And we get an option for right, center or left. And center just didn't quite do it for me. So I was holding off on a video until I got one more feature for this, which was the ability to do the left alignment. And then to make sure that these labels are clearly marked to the spots in the line that you want them to see, we can turn on the leader lines. There we go. And those put those directly attached to the label points that they have. So really great uh, use of features with this. Um, I'm loving all the updates again that Miguel and the Power BI Core Visuals team has been putting out with this and the community feedback that they've been taking in. Uh, but as always, if you like this video, if you have any suggestions on how you're gonna use some of these techniques, drop that into the comments down below. Don't forget to check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe, help my channel grow, and I will see you all in my next video.